Hi and welcome to the first section of this Level 2 Beginners course on FL Studio. If you haven't already watched Level 1, I'd stop here and watch it to begin with, as it covers all of the essentials that are required for viewing this course. So by now you should have a solid understanding of the basic principles within FL Studio. So for Level 2 we're going to be elaborating on them and getting slightly more in depth on certain topics. The course is still intended for the beginner, so I'll aim to keep things as straightforward as possible. We'll be working from the same project file as before as you can see, so let's get to it. First up we're going to be looking at applying effects to the mixer tracks using what are known as sends. Before I demonstrate this, I'll first show you how to use effects on individual inserts, but I'll also show you why this may not always be the best option, and why using a separate send track can be more effective. In the next video we're going to be looking at adding reverbs, so to demonstrate in this section I'm going to stick with the same reverb effect that we'll be using in video 2. So let's go to the first clap sound to begin with, and highlight it on the mixer. So over on the right here we have the mixer effects slot section, from which we can load up to 10 independent effects. When we get to the send tracks in just a moment you'll discover a way to add more than 10, but at this stage it's doubtful that you'll need any more than that. In fact you probably won't need anywhere near 10. But if I click on one of these drop down arrows here, I'm presented with a list of both native and third party effects. So let's find just a native uh, FL Studio Reverb and load it in. I'll explain the whole list of parameters and functions of reverb in the next video, but for now I just want to focus on the two parameters you see here called dry and wet. A lot of the time these two functions will be blended into one parameter instead of the two that you see here. And basically the dry parameter represents how much of the initial dry signal comes through, and the wet parameter will determine how much of the reverb signal comes through. So let me demonstrate by bringing the wet to the bottom and gradually introducing it so that you can hear how the reverb signal slowly comes into play. And now listen as I bring the dry parameter all the way down and notice how the original dry signal of the clap fades away so that we're only left with the reverb's wet signal. Now generally speaking, applying effects such as reverb and delay on inserts isn't always a good idea as it's difficult achieving a blend where both the dry initial transient of the sound is kept intact as the wet signal begins to blend in with it. Doing it this way often results in a muddy, kind of nebulous sound which doesn't allow each signal to kind of shine respectively in the mix. So the alternative method is widely considered to be much more effective in creating a better blend of the two signals. And this is the point at which we'll use a send track. So insert mixer tracks like this can be sent to as many other mixer tracks as you like and are useful in instances where you might want to conserve CPU by sending a group of inserts to one send track with an effect loaded on it. This way you don't have to load the same effect on every insert. It's also handy if you run out of effect slots or if you want to blend wet and dry signals which is what I'm about to show you. So first of all let's uh, mute the reverb here. And as you can see on the mixer beside clap 1 is an empty sl slot called clap reverb. And to send clap 1 to this, uh, in this insert, simply click the arrow at the bottom of the insert track. Now if I play the sound now, you'll notice that it's only made the clap louder. I'll just bring that up a bit. This is because in its current state the send has doubled up on the dry signal. And so the first thing we want to do is add the reverb on the send to change things up. So like before, just drop down menu and over to reverb. Now the problem currently is that the reverb on the send is still allowing some of the dry signal through, and therefore we're not going to be able to achieve a blend of the two signals. The most important part of this whole process is to be absolutely sure that the send track contains no dry signal at all, and instead only allows 100% wet signal through. So let's turn the dry parameter in the reverb all the way down and the wet to full. So now we have two independent signals. On the first insert we have the initial dry clap and on the send we have the 100% wet reverb. And it's by blending and matching the volumes of these two signals that we will ultimately end up with a mix where the listener can better sort of discern which signal is which. 
So this way won't allow for the two signals to, to become as easily sort of convoluted, giving you more precise control over each one. If we had le left the reverb on the dry insert without using the send, the result would be less pronounced and more muddy. So like I say, this method is applicable to other effects too. It's not just reverb. It's fine to use the likes of EQ and compression on a single uh, insert, but even then there are situations where you want to use a send, such as when using parallel compression. So now that we're familiar with sends and how they function, let's move on to the next video where we'll be taking a more in-depth look at reverb. I'll see you there.